Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Trail Makers. And today we are messing with trains again. As you can see, my testing has been going very, very well because there is a new train track builder mod made by Just2005. And uh, it's really amazing. There's a lot of crazy stuff you can do with this. And I think I was just, I was just putting it to the limits before the video just to see what was possible. Uh, what I could record and uh, I was just trying to see how sharp I could make a track turn and it still be functional And I still don't know the answer to that But I know that it's more than I expected it to be in the first place So I built this track and it took me a little while to figure out how the mod actually works um, But it works once I knew what I was doing it actually is really really easy and quick to use and holy cow I did not expect me to be able to do that So that's kind of impressive um, I've been kind of messing with the strength settings on these because they do have controls technically, but I've been adjusting the strength to see like what would be a good strength that's not too rigid, but not too floppy to get around these turns. So let me show you how this mod actually works. It's really, really cool. Um, you can pretty much build a track that goes anywhere you want. All right, so up over here, you actually have the ability to adjust the uh, spaces between the rails, the rail thickness, and the rail height. I'm using the recommended settings for tracks with curves. So uh, what I figured out is you have straight tracks that you can spawn in so these are actually really funny these are the uh the markers for the beginning and the end of the track so if i just press enter you'll see it'll spawn the track in and then it'll snap the next portion right in front of it automatically uh so if i just keep pressing enter i'm just going to create a straight train track just like that and i could change the length of this if i wanted to and I could, I could change the elevation too if I wanted to. But uh, here, I can actually do Control Z to undo what I just did and bring it right back to me. But really useful is this move to player button. That just moves the spawn point to your player and also faces it where your player is facing. So if I face this way and then I move it to player, it's just going to face in that direction and I can build my track from there. But uh, more useful and more versatile than the straight sections is the next page, which is the curve sections. And curve sections, you can also build straight with the curve section here, as you can see. But let me go ahead and undo that. But uh, with the curve section, you can actually set your beginning and end points in completely different areas. So if I use the hotkey to set my end point to move to player, it looks like this. But the beginning is over there. So now when I press enter, it just automatically fills it in between those two areas with like a nice curve and facing in this direction. So now if I go really, really short here and oh, hold on, there we go. And now I can have a curve go just like that. I can extend it straight from here. And then I can say, let's do a complete 180, have the curve come back here. And there, oh, that, that that's a sharp curve. So you gotta, you gotta, def you gotta be logical with your positioning. I, I gave it a little bit too much to work with there. All right, now I'm actually curious. What happens if I come over here? Oh my goodness. See, this is not a track anyone wants to use. And now I'm just going to come right back on itself. There we go. Actually, I meant to have it... Hold on. Uh, undo that. I got to have my character facing this way. And what's it going to do with this? Okay, not bad. Well, yeah, pretty bad. It's not bad considered... The mod did a good job, but I did a bad job and made a bad track. Bad track. So you can just set your start point anywhere and you can even go up high. You can just set your end point pretty much anywhere with the curves uh, page selected. There we go. And you're just gonna, whoa, look at that curve. That is so cool. You think we can actually do this? I'm gonna spawn my train in and see if I can actually, I might not be able to spawn it in because it starts on a curve. Right here, can I snap to this? Oh my goodness, I, it just snapped to it automatically. So yeah, so I can just create a straight section right here, and this is where I can spawn my train. Look how easy that was. I hadn't even done that before. I've never gone back to the beginning of the track and tried to build backwards from there, and uh, it didn't take me long to figure out at all. All right, so let me see if I can actually ride up this. This might be a little bit too extreme for the train, but I want to see what happens. There we go. I'm going to try not to take it. This actually feels so easy. This is great. This is so smooth. Oh. Okay, I may have spoke too soon. What happened there? What happened there? Well, oh no. <laughs> oh no, what happened there? <laughs> Whoops. All right, I do have, have an idea to modify this train because I think the issue with this is this train has no flexibility vertically. It can go around turns, but when it comes to this section here, uh, I think it's really easy. Yep, see, that's the problem right there. Oh, actually, you know what might be the problem is the wheels might actually just be pulling it out. 
Yeah, that might not actually be a flexibility issue. That just might be an issue of the direction of the wheel rotation on those horizontal wheels. It's just, it's pushing straight, whereas the track is curving away from them. So that's probably what's happening. But as you can see, that's possible. You know what? Let's try something else here. I need to put some downforce on this thing. I'm going to use the hover pad glitch. And we're going to modify this train to be hopefully extra reliable. Oh, boy. Oh, that makes it wobbly. But let's see if this feels any more stable. I don't know yet. I don't know yet how I feel about this. It should technically give us more downforce. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> we didn't fall off the track that time. It just feels like it could explode at any moment. I guess that's the cost-benefit. What do you want? Do you want it to be... Oh, it, we're exploding. We're starting... Those moments are happening. Yeah, we lost some wheels. All right, maybe it's just too powerful. Maybe we just need less, less, uh, I don't know. I don't know what makes this more or less powerful. All right, this might be a little bit better. I just raised the, uh, the blocks off of the, oh, okay. That, that, oh, we almost went off the track there, but I raised the blocks off the hover pads by one block and it seems to have make, made the force weaker, but it might be actually a little bit too weak. We, we're still losing wheels and stuff. Yeah, this is not good. That, nope, this is not. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what the best method is for this. Well, anyway, now that we know how the track works, I've deleted that one. What I want to do is uh, I want to create a water railway. I kind of want to use, I kind of want to just go around this area and maybe even go up and onto this and then like down through it. I want to create just this crazy railway that goes all over the place. All right, here's the question. What happens if I spawn a railway in the middle of the train? Okay, that was kind of a little bit more uneventful than I expected it to be. So the reason why I did that is because if I press delete now, I spawn on the train track here, automatically aligned. And I even tested it out. I can spawn anywhere else. I can change my angle to any other angle. I'm going to spawn over here and, you know, just go face this way or whatever. And when I press this spawn point, please work. There we go. I automatically spawn on this railway track. Railway jet track. I automatically spawn on this railway track. So I think that this is going to make it really, really easy to restart whatever this course is going to be. All right. So now let's build this course. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think I've done it. I've made a kind of insane course that I don't know if this train's gonna be able to do it or any train for that matter, but let me take you through what the course actually is. Uh, so we go in this direction. We have some random curves here just because I was still learning how the, uh, how the curve function actually works when it comes to generating track, but I think it'll be fine. So we're gonna do a kind of cool figure eight between this area right here, all these pipes. And then we're gonna go down, and I thought this kind of looked like if there were train tracks here, this could be kind of like the train station area where people, there's like a train stop here, like people can load on and off the train. I don't know. I just thought it would be kind of cool to have the train tracks go through here. So then things, this is where things start getting to like, I don't know territory. Um, so we're gonna go really close to the water here where our, some of our wheels are probably gonna be touching the water And I'm hoping that we're gonna get the water splash effect as we drive across the water here Like you can see even the waves themselves the very very gentle waves end up Enveloping the track a little bit as it comes up So I'm just hoping that it's not gonna affect the physics of the train But we can still get the uh, the water splash effect which I know I'm probably asking for too much there. Those are competing concepts, aren't they? So yeah, then we take it in here and I did something kind of interesting with this. I have a bit of a weird figure eight going on here. So we're just gonna go up onto this section. Then we cross over to the other side here. And then we go back down. Oops, I'm forgetting my controls here. We go back down onto in the other pathway. And then once we come out, we cross back up to the top. And then this is gonna take us up and through the hoop of fire. It looks like I was going higher through the hoop than I wanted than I wanted to, but look, that's right about middle. And then down through this hoop of fire. And then that is when we are going to link right back. It's snapped right back to the starting point. So we should have a full on circular track. But of course, um, this train, this train right here, it's it's kind of boring. It's not the greatest train in the world. So let's uh let's build an actual Maybe I shouldn't have the the hover pad.
All right, guys, I thought I was going to be clever and make a system like this that was going to lock me onto the track and make it much more stable and secure. But uh, it turns out it had the exact opposite effect. So this is something, yeah, uh, this is something that cannot stay, unfortunately. <laughs> this might be a very dangerous train course, okay? <laughs> So I'm just going to try to build a train car and just have this thing look trainish. Not going to make it too complicated. Not going to spend three hours on it. Just going to make it look like more than a slab. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think I got myself an okay looking train here. I mean, for the time I put into it, I think it looks okay. Um, so I don't... Oh, no. Guys, this... <laughs> this is not going to be as easy as I was hoping it was going to be to ride this course. Um, so I'm really torn between using the downforce or not. I mean, okay, I'm using the downforce right now. I wasn't in that last run. Oh no, guys, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to do this? You know what, maybe I'm going to switch the engine out for a raw engine. I think a raw engine will behave a lot more like a train engine should behave because it has really, really low acceleration, but a higher top speed. So it'll take a while to pick up some speed, but maybe, just maybe, it'll feel a little bit more consistent. All right, there we go. Raw engine. Does this help? Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, where's the end of my course? Where's the end of my course? Why is it end over the- Okay, I may have accidentally hit some hotkeys that affected the course while I was building because I didn't turn the mod off. But here, let's just see if we have any hope right now. This seems to be doing better with the raw engine, to be honest. This, this isn't bad. Can we make- This is a really sharp turn here, though. I don't know. Guys, I'm very concerned for the future of this course. You know what? I'm going to make some adjustments because what's cool is um, you can adjust the track width and thickness and all of this and load in the track that you have saved and it'll update it with the new thickness and stuff. So let's hope that this goes well. All right. So I've made some adjustments to this thing. I just got it. I got to take it slow. Okay. And we're losing pieces. This is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be, guys. Uh... This is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be to do it, a successful train run on this course. I've been trying to make some adjustments. I even, uh, I, what I tried to do was actually add suspension on these wheels down below. I added more wheels as well to, uh, to decrease the chances of me just falling off the track if I lift up a little bit. I've also added extra wheels. I just added wheels. When in doubt, add more wheels. But I've been adjusting the width of the course and stuff to accommodate this because I felt like the course was just too pressured in on the wheels. And I'm trying to figure out what the uh, ideal measurements are going to be. This is definitely better from when I started. But I'm going to make some more adjustments and see if I can actually have a course I can traverse. All right, guys, you may notice I'm a lot further than I've ever been before. And that, I think, and I hope, is because of this adjustment I've made. I've actually changed the wheels in the front, at least. I was just going to test it in the front, but it seems to actually be working really well. I changed it to those, uh, the bicycle wheels, pretty much. And having that extra room on the sides of them actually seems to really help them not... I, the problem that I was seeing was when I was going into a turn, these wheels would dig into the sides too much, like they were getting pushed into the sides, and then uh, the attachment points, like right here, would end up colliding with the sides and then just disintegrating. So these wheels have more of a buffer space between the attachment point and the edges compared to the small wheels. And then having this extra room seems to make them less likely to, uh, much less likely to actually be pushed too hard into the sides. And look at what we got here. We're on the water part and it actually is kind of working as intended. We have the, uh, the water animation splashing and it's actually not really affecting us that much yet. It gets a little bit deeper right here, but this is totally working. This is exactly what I wanted right here. All right, this isn't the fastest train right now. I might try to do a faster run at some point with another engine. The engine seems to have a really weird, inconsistent speed. And I did make sure that they're not attached to the bottom wheels at all. So I don't know what the cause of that is just yet. But maybe one of these wheels or something is turning the wrong way. It doesn't look like it, though. But uh, we've... This is the most flawless run I've, I've ever imagined having after those first couple. I wasn't sure I was actually going to be able to have a reliable run on these train tracks, but this so far is going super smooth. 
super well. No incidents so far, and it's normally about the time when I'm saying these things that an accident happens. But so far, it's still going. But this is where things get complicated up here. There's going to be much sharper turns and uh, much sharper changes in altitude. So I'm curious how the train's going to handle this. I'm going literally as fast as I can right now. I don't know why the engine's so slow, but let's see what happens when we get here. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to slow down. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm definitely going to take it slow on these. That was a rough turn right there. We almost took some damage. I saw some sparks. Ooh, that's a sharp turn. Okay. We're doing good, though. We're do we're still alive. But, uh oh Now, this is... Oh! That's fine. We don't... We can... No, oh, don't do it again over here. Oh, no, we're fine over here. Okay. Now, we just got to go back down. And do that again. Oh, I'm a little bit nervous for this turn does not look very, very smooth. All right, gentle. Gentle. Okay. Okay. I didn't even have the gas go. Oh, no. What was that? What was that? Okay, we lost a whole section of our back wheels. I should Why didn't I just make the back wheels like the front? I should have done that. The back wheels might get off center now. They might turn more than they should but we'll get we're just gonna ride it out literally ride it out as best as we can see if we can make it through the hoops of fire up to the hoops of fire but we have another one of these sharp turns coming up right here slow down nice and gentle all right it's working it's working uh oh Ooh, i didn't think if i have enough strength to get up here okay Woo. for a second there i thought the engine was going to be strong enough Look at this. The view is going to be amazing up there when we go through those hoops of fire. Assuming that we're even going to make it. I think the worst of it is over, though, as far as turns and uh, difficult track to traverse. Oh, this is really steep. Okay, I'm still going, though. Is it getting less steep yet? I think it's getting less steep. I think we're good. What I was going to say is the track, the whole concept of track creation like this is brand new in Trail Makers. So I'm sure there's still a lot of progress to be made when it comes to making a reliable train cart, like a reliable wheel system like this. Because already this system that I've done here for my train is way better than the stock system that I tried to uh, start out with. So I'm sure there's even more room for improvement on this. And uh, I hope at some point we can get a train that can go super fast around turns and everything. But uh, right now, <laughs> this is not that train, as you can see. But after I do this run through, if I do this run through, I'm gonna slap a bunch of engines on this thing and just see what it feels like to go super fast, especially over that water section. I really wanna go fast across the water section and get some really nice splashes coming up. Oh boy, we're getting in the downhill section now. Little bit concerned about this section. I'm gonna have to regulate my speed, otherwise I might fall off the track. Yeah, this is the first first run through. I'm gonna take a conservative. Conservative with the speed. Not go too overboard. I don't even know what the top speed I've achieved was. I feel like this is it right here. <laughs> 60, a little bit over 60. I'm actually pressing W right now. It's really weird how the engine works on this train. Man, you can create a train track that goes across the entire map if you wanted to with this mod. All right, here we go. Some final turns here before we make it back to the end. Are we going to actually make the full loop without falling off? I'm really surprised at how stable we've been since we lost that section of back wheels. All right, this is the last sharpest turn here. All right, slow it down a little bit. I think we got it. I think we got it right back to the spawn point. Look at that. A successful run through. But now it's time to ramp things up a little bit. First things first, though, I'm going to go ahead and delete this section because we have a much better section up in the front that I think will probably do better in the back, too. All right. So I just stacked a whole bunch of engines right here in the back, and I just got to make sure that they are not powering any of these wheels. All right. They look good. So now let's see how fast we go. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may have made a mistake. I think I'm a little bit too back heavy as well. Let's put some more weight down here. All right, there we go. We seem to be staying much better on the track. Holy cow, this is going 
way better at this speed than I expected. And also way slower than I expected, given the amount of engine. Okay. Well, we could have seen that coming, huh? All right. I think we have more downforce. It's going to be hard to tell. We seem to be doing okay so far at a decent speed. But man, it really likes to slow me down for some reason. I don't know what is slowing me down, though. Ugh. Come on. Stay on track. Literally stay on track. No! <laughs> well, this does feel way more consistent, way more smooth with uh, with this wheel setup. I like this. It just needed a little bit of give. But obviously, I'm super top-heavy. It's a train. Like, it... Obviously, all my weight is above the track, so I don't know... I don't know what I would expect as far as trying to deal with going around the turns. All right, I just want... Oh, no. All right, I got a really stupid idea to try. All right, there we go. Check it out. So we got these bars going under now. So I'm just going to go full speed and see what happens. Oh, my goodness. This actually seems to be working so far. But here's the sharp turn. This is the turn I fall off on usually. Yep, that's what I was worried about right there. Yeah, okay, all right. Yep, no, we can't go that bad. I am ready to try this again. We have faster potential. And I want to get to the water section with this. Hopefully intact. And then speed across the water section and see uh, how that looks. All right, just gonna go. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna try to intention. Uh, I'm gonna try to take. All right, well, thanks. Thanks for trying, pipes, but uh, sorry, you're just not it. Gotta do it the old fashioned way and actually control my speed on the turn, which I guess a regular train would have to do, so yay, realism. All right, here we go. We're getting to the water portion. This is it. Yeah, there's some more water kicker. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Last time we were just getting the little ripples. Now we're actually getting like the whitewash of the water coming up. That is good. That's gonna make the thumbnail right there. Yeah, let's take some screenshots of this. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, that was actually successful. So now I'm just gonna go full speed, even though full speed is really not that fast. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna send myself. I'm gonna send it right off at the end of this. I know I'm not gonna be able to make this turn. This is one of the sharpest turns in the course, I think. And that was not the result I was expecting. What just happened? I'm still just going full speed here. Oh, there we go. I actually made it up onto the thing. I thought I was gonna send myself into the water. That was really unexpected. All right, so because I was curious about it and I knew people in the comments were gonna be too, I made some uh, train carts to try to drag behind me and I like messed with the system here. So I got some steering hinges that are on very, very low strength. So they should be able to flex sideways and up and down. And then I have these pistons to control the engine on the track uh, behind, and I realized I did not then extend that back to the track behind that one, so the one in the back does not have wheels that'll turn. So give me a second, I gotta just adjust this one last thing. Oh my goodness, it works kinda. This is definitely more sketchy. Oh, this is a whole lot more sketchy on the wheels, that's for sure. But I do got some train cars behind me now. Let's slow down on the turns. Okay, it's doing that for me. I actually just, I'm pressing W constantly right now. Whoa, what's happened on the end there? Oh, that's an issue. As it goes around the turn, the sensors don't trigger what they're supposed to sensor because, oh boy. It's a lot more complicated to make, to make this happen than I thought it was going to be. So, uh, at least there was an attempt and just an attempt it is. Well, now we're straight, so it's going normal again. And then now we're turning, so it's no longer going normal again. Yeah, I definitely could have made this a little bit better, but uh, it's hard when the trains are flexing to send a signal to a sensor. I haven't seen a system yet that takes that into account because this is the first curved train track I've ridden in Trailmakers. But hey, at least I tried, right? I'm sure someone's gonna come up with a brilliant idea on how to go around curves and communicate signals to the trains behind the main car. If you guys enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy some more stuff on the channel as well. So go ahead and check that out on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.